Okay, so now I'm going to look at the sixth codility lesson, tape equilibrium. Let's just get straight into it. Got 120 minutes for one task. It's a time complexity task, so I want to do it efficiently. It says a non-empty array A consisting of N integers is given. Array A represents numbers on a tape. Any integer P such that P is between zero and N, the length of the array, splits the tape in two non-empty parts. A0, A1 to A, P minus one, and A, P, P plus one to N minus one. So P is the split point of the array. The difference between the two parts is the value of the sum of the first part minus the sum of the second part, the absolute value of that. In other words, it's the absolute difference between the sum of the first part and the sum of the second part. For example, given the array 31245, we can split this tape in four places. P equals one is three on one side and one, two, three, four is 10 on the other side. So that gives a difference of seven or we go four and nine, which gives a difference of five, six and seven, a difference of one, 10 and three, a difference of seven. Write a function that given a non-empty array A of N integers returns the minimal difference that can be achieved. For example, three, one, two, four, three, should return one. Write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions. N is an integer in the range of two to 100,000. And each element of array is between minus 1,000 and 1,000. So because it's a time complexity function, I think the thing not to do is to loop through, well, to loop through the index of the array from zero to n and split them in two and then add them all up on one side and add them all up on the other side because we only need to return the difference we don't need to remember it i think that the thing to do here is add them all together put them in a number and then loop through the array subtracting this the the subtracting the values from that number and putting them into another number and then seeing the difference between those two numbers and if it's the smallest difference we've seen so far return it or rather remember it uh, keep going to the end and then return it and we do need to go to the end because we could have a, a very big number on the very end for example we could have a thousand at the start and then we could have loads of zeros which are going to make no difference and then we could have uh, minus 1000 or, or something like that on the end so we we need to do the entire loop but doing it this way with these two values keeping track of what's on either side we only have to loop through the array twice the first time to take the um, to get the total value of the array and the second time to run through to find the difference. OK, so let's have a go at that. So I've prepared this in um, Eclipse. We're taking in an int array and the example we're going to give it is 31243. So first thing I want to do is get the total value of the array. Um, now I'm going to call this numbers on right. 
because then the numbers on the left will be uh, added up as I go along. So I'm initialize it to zero and then I'm going to loop from zero to a length one at a time numbers on right so now numbers on right should be the t the total of all of the numbers in the array int numbers on left equals zero what I really want to do is just loop through again subtracting this value is that right? so I'm going to loop through the values again and subtract the value from the numbers on the right because the numbers now moved on to the left and add it to the numbers on the left Now before starting this loop, I'm going to make it a min diff and I'm going to make that integer max value. And here I'm going to say if math.abs numbers on left minus numbers on right. is less than min diff return uh, no min diff equals that and then return min diff now I'm going to debug this because I think it's pretty pretty straightforward but I'll just debug it to make sure it works but we want it to return the value of 1 and I'll debug it just to make sure it's doing what I think it is if it works and then I'll think about corner cases after that 1 so it seems to work so I'm just going to debug it So we've got one, three, one, two, four, three. So numbers on right is three. One makes four, two makes six, four makes 10, and three makes 13. Min diff is a very large number. Numbers on left, so in the first step, the total is 13. We want to take three. No, that's not right, is it? Uh, no, it is right. So we want the numbers on the right to be uh, 13 minus 3, 10. And numbers on the left to be the 3, 3. The difference between the two is now 10 minus 3, 7. So min diff equals 7. The next time, numbers on right, we want to make that now 9, 2, 4 and 3. And numbers on the left, 3 and 1 is 4. Now the difference between 9 and 4 is 5. So min diff equals 5. I'm reasonably confident that that's working now. I just wanted to debug through it double check because it may have come up with the right answer but still done it wrong um, so now let's think about corner cases so what do we know um, n is in the range of 2 to 100,000 so we're not giving it an empty array each element a is within the range of minus 1,000 to 1,000 I'm not sure what difference that makes in corner cases. I don't think there are any corner cases. Ooh, 
what if all of the values are zero? That could trip it up. I'm just going to try again. Zero, 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 zero. Now, what is the right answer? The right answer is zero. Yeah. Uh, if we have one thousand zero zero zero, the right answer is a thousand. Yeah, I don't think that there are any corner cases that are going to trip us up. Uh, so let's submit that. run the test see if it passes the test cases just one test case the one example we were given and that's okay I am reasonably confident about this so I'm going to submit it and let's see how we've done we've looped through the array twice so it's certainly not using exponential loop eighty four percent so it's not perfect performance is a hundred percent so there's a corner case that's tripped us up wrong answer double two elements got zero expected two thousand Small elements got zero expected. Okay, so there's a corner case that I've not thought about. So I'm just going to go back into this and fix it. So if we give it two values, 1000 and zero, it gives us 1000. If I give it 1000 and 1000, it gives us zero. Okay, in the case of 1000 and minus 1000, it's giving us zero. But we have to split the tape. P has to be bigger than zero and it has to be less than N. So what I've forgotten to do is make sure that we only evaluate it which in this case is I is greater than zero and we don't want to go all the way to the end either so I think 1000 and minus 1000 should give us 2000 it's given us Nah, what we want to, we do want to, we don't want to go to the end, but we do want to do first value because the first value is moving the first number across. So there, 2000. So I think that's the thing I forgot to do was just making sure P, the split point, was not at either 
end of the array. So I'll submit that and see if we've got it up to 100%. Just run the test on it again. Make sure we have done that right and then submit. And 100%, so now all of the tests are passing. So that's the, uh, the sixth Codility lesson, tape equilibrium. Thanks for watching.